Hello everyone, this is Pastor Solomon and I welcome everyone worshiping online. As we get into worship, let us pray together and we will get straight into worshiping our one true God. Lord, we thank you for allowing us to come together through this technology that we get to worship you in spirit and in truth. I pray that you will be with us wherever we are, that we are able to focus on you and your word today. Please uh, bless all of us and that we have a, not just a wonderful time, but that we are blessed by you because Lord, you saved us through your son Jesus and that you gave us a new hope and new life. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. It's time for praise, so I hope everyone, you guys are ready to worship the Lord with excitement and joy. Everyone stand up, praise the Lord!
pray. Dear Lord, thank you for giving us a beautiful day to worship you. I pray that you pour grace and wisdom over us as we prepare our hearts for worship. Please touch us and instill your words in us so that we may live according to you. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us let's recite the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Hi guys, this is Pastor Solomon again, and now I'm going to share the Word of God with you. And today, we're going to look at Book of Luke, chapter 10, verses 25 through 37. But for for the time being, I just want to read not everything, not all the all the verses, but I'm just going to read 25 through all the way to 28, so that we um, can save the time of talking about, about the parable of the Good Samaritan as we go ahead into worship. So Luke chapter 1 and chapter 10, verse 25 to 37. All right. And the title is The Good Samaritan. All right. Hope you guys have your Bible with you to read this passage with me. All right. Luke chapter 10, verses 25 to 28. This is the word of God. Ready, said, begin. And behold, a lawyer stood up to put him to the test, saying, Teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? He said to him, What is written in the law? How do you read it? And he answered, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your strength, and with all your mind, 
and your neighbor as yourself. And he said to him, you have answered correctly. Do this and you will live. Let's pray together. Lord, we thank you for just giving us this privilege of hearing your word. As we listen to your word, I, Father God, I pray that you would shape us, you would mold us, and that you would transform our hearts, thoughts, and mind, that we be able to truly reflect and live a manner according to your greatness and your holiness. We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So today I want to talk about the parable of the Good Samaritan. We just read from Luke chapter 10, 25 to 28. And I am going to talk to you guys about other, um, the, the rest of the story of the parable. But before I get too ahead of myself, I want to go over today's first catechism questions. Uh, first one, what is sin? Sin is any lack of conformity to or transgression of the law of God. What is meant by lack of conformity? Not being or doing what God requires. And I want to just really pause here and think about this. What is meant by the lack of conformity? Not being or doing what God requires. Then what is meant by transgression? Doing what God forbids. Meaning that God uh, that prevented not to do. Last question of the day. What does every sin deserve? The wrath and curse of God. So we just dealt with four questions. And as you have noticed, it's regarding the sin. Now what are these sin? It's so important for us. And this is the very reason why Jesus had to come and die for his people. And, and today's Bible point, I just want to make it really simple for everyone so we can read this all together and be able to remember it after the sermon and rest of the week. Let's read it all together. Ready, set, begin. Sin separates us from God and deserves His wrath. Now, it's going to be just me reading this time. Listen carefully. Sin separates us from God and deserves His wrath. And I just want to talk about the rest of the parables and but I just want to give you a little context a cultural background uh, why and how this parable came about and Jesus is teaching this lawyer who came to test Jesus about his wisdom and his knowledge his understanding of God's law and this lawyer answered correctly to Jesus when Jesus says what is written in the law and he says to love the Lord your God with all your heart your might and strength and everything that you have to worship the Lord and to love the Lord, and as your neighbor, and to your neighbors as well. And Jesus says, you did this correctly. You answered correctly. Now, go do it yourself, and you will live. So Jesus is trying to talk to this lawyer who wanted to trick, or not just trick, but to test Jesus. And Jesus, knowing his heart, he's trying to teach him what it really means to love the Lord and to love our neighbors. So Samaritans, um, they're known for um, that, that they're not favored by God or they thought that they were the, the lawbreakers because the Samaritans, they were the ones who intermarried with other nations. And this is where we get the Samaritans and people, the Hebrews, they hated going through the land of Samaria and they would go around and detour if they were to go across um, and where their destination led. So they wanted to avoid as much as possible the land of Samaria and the Samaritans in general because they thought they disobeyed God and they were cursed and that they, they shouldn't be even talking or having any kind of dealings with the Samaritans. But notice how the title is the Good Samaritans. Who, who the Hebrew people thought they were the worst or the bad kind of people. So I'm going to read you the rest of the parables. And as I read the, from the scripture, I'm going to show you the picture so you can kind of imagine and be on the sho in the shoes at the time how this, this Jesus was trying to teach us. Here, verse 29. But he, meaning the lawyer, 
desiring to justify himself, said to Jesus, And who is my neighbor? Remember how the lawyer, the lawyer answered correctly and said, You gotta love the Lord with all your heart, and you gotta also love your neighbor. So this lawyer coming to Jesus and says, And who is my neighbor then? So Jesus is walking him with the storytelling, like a, the parable of the Good Samaritan. So in verse 30, Jesus replied, A man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho, and he fell among robbers, who stripped him and beat him and ran, meaning to departed, leaving him half dead. And there's this one person, there's going to be three, three people who come by, this injured man who's almost half dead. And I want, to, I want to watch this, pay attention to who actually showed God's love. Verse 31, Now by chance a priest was going down that road, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. So the priest, you would think that he would go and help him. Priests are the ones who ministers to the church or to a group of, of believers, right? So the priest, you would think that he would stop and help this man. A priest, seeing the injured man half dead, he went to the other side and he passed by him. Then verse 32. So likewise, a Levite, a person who used to serve in the temple, a temple assistant, also a religious man, when he came to the place and saw the injured and half dead man, he also passed by on the other side. You would also expect a Levite who was assistant at helping at the temple, a religious man that he would, who knows the law, would help this injured man. But no, this Levite passed by him. And lastly, the last person comes by, verse 33. But a Samaritan, as he journeyed, came to where he was. And when he saw him, he had compassion. He went to him and bound up his wounds, pouring on oil and wine. Those were expensive back in the time. But this Samaritan was compassionate. He felt for this injured man and he was trying to show kindness and mercy to the person who needed him the most at the time. Then he set him on his own animal and brought him to an inn, like a hotel, and took care of him. Verse 35, and the next day he took out two denarii and gave them to the innkeeper, saying, Take care of him, and whatever, whatever more you spend, I will pay you when I come back. And you know, this Samaritan did not owe this injured man any kind of money or death or debt. But what he did was he showed kindness and love and compassion the person that he just doesn't even know, a random stranger that he meets on the street. And last verses of um, today's passage, Luke chapter 10, verse 36 and 37, Jesus speaks to the lawyer and us. Which of these three, meaning the Levite, the, Levite, the priest, and the Samaritan, which of these three do you think proved to be a neighbor? To a man who fell among robbers. And the lawyer said, The one who showed him mercy. And Jesus said to him, You go and do likewise. Now that's the, the entire story, the parable of the Good Samaritan. What did you guys think? Now there were priests, there was a priest and a Levite who walked by and who did nothing. They did not help the man, even though they knew the law, even though they were taught to love the Lord with, their, with all their might, and that they would have to love their neighbor. But they did not obey the Lord. They knew it here, but not over here. But the Samaritan, who the Hebrews, the, the origin, the people of Israelites who hated the Samaritans, and they thought they were the ones who disobeyed God by intermarrying with other nations. This Samaritan actually stopped 
when he saw the injured man and he was able to show his com compassionate heart and was shown mercy to this injured half dead man. So you would think, oh, since it's a priest or Levite, a religious, a pious person that would help the man. But no, it was actually the Samaritan who they thought were disobeying God, who they thought who were cursed by God. It was the Samaritan who helped the disinjured man. So what is the lesson behind all of this? If you know something that you need no right thing to do, then you must do it. This is found in James chapter 4, verse 17. So whoever knows the right thing to do and fails to do it, for him it is sin. Have you ever had an experience like this when you know that something is wrong and you knew that you have to do the right thing, but you just didn't? Maybe we could pause and think about our lives as well and what we do as Christians. Do you really do the right thing when you know the right thing? Or are we like the priest and the Levite who knows the right thing and who knows the law of God but fails to keep it and to obey it? You see, Matthew 22, 37-39, Jesus says this and says, and he said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. And this is the great first commandment. And listen carefully. And a second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. And the parable of the Good Samaritan talks about who our neighbor is. Our neighbor is the one who keeps the law. Not just knowing the law, but be able to obey it and practices what, what God has given him. The mercy and grace that God has poured on us through his son Jesus. And interestingly enough, John 13, 35 says, Jesus says this, By this, by loving your neighbors, by this, the people will know you are my disciples. If you have love for one another. Guys, maybe you heard about this parable often and maybe you know the Bible and you heard lots of stories in the Bible and you know a lot of it over here. But is it really over here and are you actually applying it and practicing what you learn in the Bible? And what Jesus, uh, how he gave us an example of becoming a role model who walked before us and who showed his perfect love and sacrifice on the cross for our sins. Are you practicing the love? Are you worthy? Are we worthy to call be the disciple of Jesus? Are we loving one another? Lastly, I want to conclude with this book of James. James 2.17, he says, So also faith by itself, if it does not have works, is dead. If you have faith in God, in Jesus, and if we fail to show and practice and really obey the word of God in our lives, if you fail to do it, then our faith maybe not might be genuine. Of course, you don't earn salvation by your works and doing good deeds, but it's the way other way around. If God gave you this grace this wonderful grace and love and compassion for you, and you know that you're saved by God's grace. Hey, there must be some kind of fruit bearing in your lives, showing love and kindness, mercy and goodness to those around you, and that they may see you and that you are worthy to call the disciple of Jesus. Let's wrap up by reading our Bible point one more time. Ready, set, go. Sin separates us from God and deserves His wrath. Remember, guys, if you know the right thing to do, and if you fail to do it, it is sin. So remember that sin separates us from God. And that if sin is in your life, make sure you pray every day and repent. So this week, I want you guys to do this. Our action plan is right from the scripture and to be just applying in our lives, on our daily walk with Jesus. Repent of your sins every day. Even me, even every Christians in this world, we make mistakes and we stumble and we sin. 
And at those point in life, we need to kneel down before God and pray for forgiveness and that to pray that God would give us stronger faith to obey it and that God would humble us and be able to show love to those uh, who are in need of our help and our love. And foremost, that we be able to show the love of Christ that God has given us. Lastly, the first catechism questions, I want you guys to re review it after the worship is over. And let me pray and we'll just end our worship. Lord, we thank you for being a good and compassionate Father. And Lord, as we learn from the parable of the Good Samaritan, the neighbor is not just the ones who know the law of God, but rather it's the ones who practice and obey in their own lives the laws and the commandments that you have given us. And Lord Jesus said to love the Lord with all your heart and also love your neighbor. And by this, the people would know that you are my disciple. So I pray that we would practice this love that God has given us through Christ and that we will show this sacrificial love and mercy to those who need our help and to love our neighbors. Lord, we are at times like the priest, this Levite, who just passed by this injured man who was in need. But Lord, help us to be more like the Samaritan, more like our Lord Jesus, that we show love and mercy and kindness. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us end our worship with Lord's Prayer. Ready, set, begin. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, that will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Alright guys, have a wonderful week. Bye-bye.